Okay, today we're going to be going over chapter four. We're going to start this. This is life in the colonies. Don't worry about the page numbers. Section one is what we're going to be going over again. This is uh, governing the colonies. We're going to start studying more about government today. And a couple of things that we want to go over is uh, the Bill of Rights. We're going to we're going to hit on that. But what I want to hit hard on today is going to be habeas corpus. Um, so we're going to learn how did the English ideas about government and trade affect the colonies? How did the political ideas mold the colonial settlements in Americas? And then what kinds of political systems were created to provide order and justice? The Magna Carta is the very first one. This is a very old document. Uh, you can actually see this document at the uh, archives with the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution of the United States. The only thing you can read on the Magna Carta anymore that is very old, you really can't read anything. It's going to be a seal on it. And this is, this is actually a British document, so we, we have it in our possession now. Magna Carta was the first document to place restriction on English um, rulers' power. I believe it was King John that had to relinquish some power because of lords that were demanding it. So it limited the monarch's rights to levy taxes without the consulting of the nobles themselves. Uh, protected the rights to own private property. It also guaranteed the rights to trial by jury. So some of these may seem very familiar to us today. At first it was only limited to nobles, which is the upper class. However, over time, these rights are going to be extended to all English citizens. Remember, I came from England, so that's why it says English. Legislation is a colonial government. Uh, legislature is a group of people who have power to make laws, which we have today. Uh, we have three branches of government. We have the executive, legislative, and judicial. So the legislative branch is split up into two houses, and that's going to be the House of Representatives and the Senate. One is the, uh, the upper house being the Senate, lower house being the uh, House of Representatives. So that's with us today. In England, they established the legislative branch known as Parliament, which is, they have two sides in Parliament as well. One side is across from another side, uh, literally across, uh, with a podium that is not necessarily right in the middle, but it is in the center towards the end so everybody can hear what the speaker has to say. <clears throat> in the colonial America, uh, there was a House of Burgesses uh, in Virginia and a general court in Massachusetts. Uh, and these are going to be individuals that are going to have governmental power over the, the colonists uh, in, in every single colony. Today, we're going to have a legislative branch known as Congress. We already talked about that. Bill of Rights. Uh, this was not included. In the um, first initial Constitution, so this is going to be the first ten amendments to the Constitution. A Bill of Rights is a written list of freedoms uh, that the government promises to protect uh, for its citizens. So that was not initially in there. Uh, then some individuals said it will be in there. We're not going to sign it, so then they put that in there. So we're talking about the uh, Constitution in the United States. So in 1688, the Parliament was able to overthrow the King of England in the Glorious Revolution, is what they called it. And then in 1689, a new King and Queen of England signed what they call the English Bill of Rights. So then the United States' uh, first 10 amendments, we already talked about this as well, are the United States Bill of Rights, first 10 amendments. What is habeas corpus? I do want to hit hard on this today. I have a couple of videos we're going to show you. Uh, one is on Keith Hughes, and then the next one is going to be on Abraham Lincoln, where he takes away habeas corpus. Habeas corpus is the uh, principle that a person cannot be held in prison without being charged with a specific crime. Uh, so you have to have your body uh, in front of the actual judge so you can hear what you have been charged with. Uh, so it's, it's actually, um, I believe it's Latin. I forget off the top of my head what it means, but it means the body. I'm pretty sure that's what it means in Latin. So this was often a common practice used by kings and queens and tyrants and dictators to eliminate 
political adversaries. Um, so, meaning they got rid of it. They got rid of habeas corpus, okay? They didn't have it. They would just go ahead and put them in prison and not even tell them what they were charged. They would just go ahead and um, place them right in there into um, <clears throat> those places with, without even um, having their, their charges even known to the individual. Now, we did talk about uh, this initially. So Abraham Lincoln actually broke habeas corpus during the Civil War um, and imprisoned many Americans who were seen as a threat to the Union. I believe his quote went something like this, um, to save the body, uh, it's necessary to uh, sacrifice a limb, so to save the body. Um, so that's what Lincoln was trying to do. Uh, he's not the only person to do this. I believe it was started with uh, uh, George W. Bush with uh, terrorists after 9-11. Uh, that was also with uh, uh, Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. If terrorists actually um, were captured, then they didn't have any habeas corpus, so it was also broken as well. So presidents can actually do that. Legislative groups in the uh, colonies. We had the first two legislative groups for the English colonists were the House of Burgesses in Virginia. Then we have the General Court in Massachusetts. So the House of Burgesses was created in 1619 and established laws for the Jamestown colony. Um, then we have, and that's, that's gonna be a, a governor, uh, and the governor's gonna be in charge of the actual colony as well. Uh, General Court was uh, created in 1629 then and established laws for the colonists in Massachusetts, securing political rights. Uh, the colony's officer offered a greater chance of gaining political rights. Okay, so the American colonies allowed 50% to 75% of white males to vote. Usually you had to be white male of age, and um, that would be, I, I believe, of 21 was the age then, I believe was the correct age. And you had to be a property owner uh, for voting as well. So I'm not mistaken on those criteria. Freedom of the press, uh, this is an interesting one. This is gonna be one of our bell ringers. Uh, a notable court case in 17, 1735 helped establish freedom of the press. So we have this, name, this guy named John Peter Zinger, published the, of the New York, he's a publisher of the New York Weekly Journal. He's gonna be arrested for printing a series of articles that criticized the governor. Uh, so the court cited, that means they, they found this uh, on they found Zinger to be correct then on what he was doing uh, and determined that the press has a right and responsibility that's a big word there um, keyword is very important to keep the public informed of the truth uh, we're going to run into problems of that during um, some wars uh, one of them is definitely going to start with Vietnam so you, you don't want to tell the enemy exactly what's going on, but yet you have people that are from the press that are actually embedded. That means they're moving with the actual troops and they're taking pictures or they're um, doing interviews and they don't want them there because they don't want the enemy to actually grab any information that's gonna hurt them uh, with their stealth. Of, of their tax. So that makes sense. So it's a, it's a catch-22. Freedom of the press gives journalists the right to publish the truth without the restriction or a penalty. And that's what the freedom of the press is. Libel. Uh, we went over this a little bit with our uh, question of the week with uh, the only president to actually win a libel suit, and that was Teddy Roosevelt because he was uh, being uh, accused of drunkenness and he sued for libel um, <clears throat> reasons for six cents. So libel is the uh, publishing of a statement that damages a person's reputation. So Teddy Roosevelt uh, was, was uh, not wanting to be known as a drunkard. So that's why he sued for that libel case. He's the only president to do that. Zinger, he was actually charged with libel, 
because of the reputation of the actual, um, I believe, governor at that time. So Zinger's lawyer argued that the article Zinger published was based on fact and therefore should not be considered liable. Because remember, um, it, it's, uh, it is going to damage the person's reputation, but it is true. Okay, with Teddy Roosevelt, no, he was not a drunkard, so that was false. So that's, that's kind of a slander going on there. So this is what the court agreed upon and found Zinger not guilty for libel because it was what? A fact. It was the truth. Therefore considered not to be libel. Navigation acts, we've gone over these quite a bit. Navigation acts were passed to strengthen the idea of mercantilism. These laws would help increase England's, that's your mother, right? That's mommy's economy and put heavier uh, restrictions on English colonies, very heavy. So what are they doing here? We have the colonies, these are 13 kids. So we're actually, we have gold, silver, fur, lumber, food stuffs. That's all coming out of the colonies at low prices to the mother country. And then the mother country is gonna manufacture because we don't have the technology, mommy does. Mommy's got all the factories, okay? And they're gonna go ahead and make things and then that's gonna come out of the mother country and on into the kids and those are manufactured goods and then we have to buy them, okay? And that's gonna be at high prices. So whether it's a win-win or we're looking at a win-lose uh, situation, that's up to you. But mommy does take care of the colonies, so now the colonies are gonna take care of mommy. Maybe it's kinda of like child labor. Three parts of the Navigation Act. Uh, shipment from Europe to English colonies had to go through England first because they didn't really trust the kids with the ships. They didn't want them trading with anybody else, not Spain or France. Uh, any ports to England <coughs> from the colonies had to come uh, in ships built and owned by British uh, subjects. So that means that it's going to be, you know, like American made kind of thing. This is going to be British made, British built, British owned. Okay, again, not Spanish built, not French built, not Spanish owned, not French owned, but it's got to be built, you know, by British individuals. Again, mommy doesn't trust you. Uh, it's a control thing. So the colonies could actually sell key products such as tobacco and sugar only to England. Okay, because these are called cash crops, tobacco and sugar. England needs them. They're going to get them. They can't go to anybody else. Stay in the family. And that's it. Then we're going to move on to section two. So uh, we do have some extended knowledge, so I'm going to wheel you over here. Let's see if we can check this out. Okay, extended knowledge on section one. We have governing the colonies. Lesson one, obviously, what we're going over. Beside number five. Uh, the only people who could vote, we went over this a little bit, in the colonies were white male property owners. And I believe there was an age limit to that. Uh, and then below uh, number five on that first page, the case involving uh, John Peter Zinger, we already talked about this a little bit, was an important step in establishing freedom of the press in America. Uh, number 11, enlightenment, <laughs> we talked about this in the last chapter as well, it's the increased interest in the sciences. That's the enlightenment. The awe moment. The light bulb goes on. That's what I think about. Just do the light bulb with Thomas Edison. Number 12. New England uh, used the following, which is water power uh, from streams to actually run grain and their lumber mills. So they're using water power to run uh, the mills here. Uh, at, AKA from streams. Number 13, the main cash crops we're talking about South Carolina and Georgia was ooh, rice. Why? Because it's wet. Got uh, those little bit of what swampy areas. That's it. We're going to go ahead and cut this off. I want you to have a wonderful day.